everybody welcome back to my channel we are doing camping under the stars today this is a uh, beginner level we're going to be doing this little tent here and i'm just doing a really light sketch more to just place the tent right now um, so that we don't accidentally paint over this area which i I actually taught this in a class and totally forgot to tell people to do that and that's exactly what they did so we're not making that mistake here um, so we're gonna go ahead and grab your brush we're jumping right in and we're gonna do wet on wet technique first and in order to do this one it helps tremendously if you're using concentrated liquid watercolor not necessary but it does create more of a fun uh, technique because you get to drop the colors directly onto the paper like this and have some more fun with it. Um, I'm using Dr. PH Martin's uh, concentrated or hydrous liquid watercolor depending on um, how you want to look at it and the color that I'm using. The greenish color is a thalo green. Uh, it's spelled P-H-T-H-A-L-O and then the blue is a and they're both the hydrous and the blue is a thalo blue so and they're both the hydras which means that they are light fast and the light fast dr ph martin colors are ones that won't fade over time however even the concentrated colors i've had my paintings in the heat here in the sun here in arizona and they've they've done fine so um but this is the light fast one and i dropped colors kind of randomly you'll see the pattern and then i just take my brush and I'm just swirling them together. And if you'll see the kind of the blank space in between the colors, that creates kind of a fun, cool effect later on. Um, kind of like the lighter spots in this night sky. So I'm not trying to blend too much here. So if you are not the greatest at blending, which well, let's be honest, that's, that's one of the hardest things to do, and especially watercolor, um, then you'll love this one because there's no blending. Uh, and then I'm going to, while it's drying, I'm going to be doing the water and I know I'm just kind of jumping in. There is going to be some slow points during this video where I'll try to try to explain a couple other things happening, but I want to do this beginning part first. So basically what I did for that light blue is I just kind of, I didn't completely clean my brush, but I, I cleaned it enough where there was hardly any blue left. And then I put the blue down and then I added color to it. And I did those really quick strokes across to give it the water line. Um, you could do it kind of wavy if you want. It doesn't have to be straight. I'm kind of giving that effect of a still lake. But if you want to do more wavy, if you want to be more, let's say, shore on the shore where there's waves or something, by all means, feel free. Um, I took a little bit of that thalo green, as you can see, just a tiny bit. I mean, if you're looking at my palette right now, there's, what, maybe a drop of the paint on there. It goes such a long way. Um, and it, that's all I did is add a little bit of green because it's supposed to be reflecting the, the night sky. So in order to do the tent, again, we're going to do the wet on wet technique, which again is just starting with a wet paper. So you use your brush to make it wet. My brush is still a little, little bluish, but I don't, I don't really care. Um, and then I'm going to do a yellow because the idea is that you are, that, that somebody is in the tent. They've got their lantern on, obviously not a gas lantern, like one of those, you know, the light lanterns and there's a glow within the tent. Um, again, this is Dr. Peach Martin's Hydrus watercolor, which is the light fast in Gamboge. Um, I love the Gamboge color. I actually have a giant bottle of it and uh, it's like a mustardy yellow color. It's pretty much like if you look at it, it's pretty much the color that you see there. Uh, and if you look at the the yellow, it's really pretty. Uh, it does stain really well, though. So make sure you know what you're putting down that color on because there's no lifting it. Then I took a little bit of a washed out black to create some shadows within because there's people. Uh, I think I was doing like two people and a dog in, in the tent uh, just to create a little bit of that effect there. And then a little bit of an orange, a burnt orange on the edge. Because again, it's the, you know, the effect of a glow. Like if it lights glowing from within, it's going to be darker on the outside part. And then I put a little bit of the orange on the outside of the tent because believe it or not, that's going to kind of shine through the black. You won't see it now, 
but it will create kind of a lighter black there. So it'll create this glow that's kind of going into the night. Uh, a little trick there. And then I'm taking the black and I'm kind of outlining the tent and I'm not, I'm using a very, very uh, saturated black. So I'm, I'm basically, my brush is wet so I can pick up the black, but um, it's, there's a lot of black paint on the brush and it's dry beneath it. So I'm outlining not completely close to the tent because I'm not going to do that really solid opaque black all the way up to the tent, but I'm um, kind of close to it. And then these brush lines here, um, just again, quick, quick lines to create the trunks of the trees. Don't overthink it. The more you overthink it, the more you're going to make it jaggedy and it's not going to be straight. You're not going to be happy with it. So the, just do quick, quick little lines, kind of like you did the, the water there. And I'm going to do the brush, I mean the brush, the branches and the branches are going to be kind of like a zigzaggy, scribbly, nonsensical, as you can see here, uh, I am not overthinking it. So it's a beginner level. Don't overthink it. So I'm going to show this to you in a slow-mo here because you're probably like, what are you talking about? So here you go. Really quick zigzags, not zigzags, but quick successions of a loose line. Loose meaning it's not straight. It kind of has like an upward motion. Some trees have the downward slope of the branches. You could do that. Some have them straight across. Some have that upward, um, you know, upward motions of the tree branches. So I, I went with that for mine. You could do whichever kind of branches you want. Uh, just a few at the top and then it gets thicker and thicker at the bottom. Um, a lot of people tend to make their trees. This is, uh, this is a little tip, very easy one. A lot of people tend to make their trees all exactly the same height. If you're looking at a forest, they're never exactly the same height. If you saw trees that were all exactly the same height, it would be kind of creepy. They stagger because one, trees are never the same height. They all grow at different speeds. Some are smaller, some are bigger. And then the closer they are to you, the taller they're going to look. So you want to create that illusion of depth. So you're going to do some smaller, some darker. And if you were doing this as a night scene, if it made you as a day scene, the ones in the front would be more opaque and the ones in the back would be kind of faded out and blurred. That's also how you can do fog. And I have a, a fog video too. Um, I can link in the description if you want to learn how to do fog. I did one video strictly on fog. I think it was fog and maybe snow, but fog was a big part of it. And then I want to do, now I'm just filling into black uh, where the white is. So you know, there's a blank space. It's going to be black now. Um, and, and the reason for that is, you know, you're just creating this. It's it's a night scene, it's dark, the forest is dense, so you're not gonna see every little individual tree. Um, the idea is that the forest is dense and you're seeing into it, so you're not really seeing anything except the darkness of the trees. Um, I had, when I was teaching this class, uh, I had somebody who, like, I don't wanna, I forgot to mention, don't, don't spend so much time on the branches on the lower part of the trees, because you're gonna paint over it. I didn't mention that, um, mostly because I didn't think about it. And this guy, poor guy in the class, spent so much time making these branches um, that when I told him to paint over it, he got so sad about it. So I, I told him he didn't have to do that. Uh, he was happy that I told him he didn't have to do that. But yeah, just you don't have to spend much time on the branches in the beginning part of the bottom part of the, the, the tree. So I'm going to also do, obviously, the, the tent's not going to be floating in water. Um, so I'm just filling up the bottom part because it's on the ground and because it's on the ground, um, it's, you know, obviously got the black around it and then I'm going to do black around the, uh, base of the, the tent because obviously, you know, the tent, you kind of think about it, you, you, you don't have completely, or you typically don't have a completely flattened out area to put a tent on. There's going to be like grass and, you know, whatever tr bushes, like a branch or something sticking out from around the tent, especially if you're really remote. Um, so I'd had a couple of those pieces kind of sticking up around the bottom of the tent. So it looks like it's nestled into <clears throat> the grass there. Ooh, there goes my vo voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, so you can see it better here. And then after this part, um, you'll see, you'll probably see where the black, when it starts to dry, you're going to see that 
it really, you're gonna be like, wow, that's actually not completely opaque. So when you first paint it, it looks very opaque. Um, but when you're done and it's dry, you're going to see blank spots. And that's when you want to look at it and see if there's any part you really want to fill in. If there's any really big gaping spots, but you don't want to overdo it. Um, I like the kind of depth and different opaqueness of the black. Then I'm taking a micron pen and I'm just doing my lines on the tent here. Uh, and you know, the tent has these little seams and stuff. So that's where I'm going to put the little lines. And as I mentioned before, you didn't want to go the black all the way to the end of the tent because you want to do a little bit of the softness around it, like the, the glows going into the night sky. So once it's dry, it's a very washed out black right here. Once it's dry, so you're going to see a little bit of that orange glow underneath that black and it's going to create a really cool effect. And then of course you have your little tent opening. Um, I made it darker on one side because, you know, obviously one side is sewn in and the other side is kind of zipped up so created more of a realistic effect there i think i went a little bit too more thick than i really wanted so it looks like it's kind of uh three-dimensional which isn't what i wanted um but it worked out i don't think anybody would have noticed if i hadn't said anything and then the little top part of the seam um and then i'm taking a white um a, it's a white acrylic paint marker we're doing mixed media on this we're doing the micron pen and we're doing the acrylic paint marker you can use paints, you can use black paint, you can use, you know, like a bleed proof white instead for the white stars, which is technically a watercolor. If you want to stay on medium, I, I just wanted this to turn out well. So the white acrylic pen, you could do these little tiny stars. Um, look how tiny they are. And it's, it's tedious, but it's almost like, um, I don't know, it's just kind of therapeutic to do because you're not really thinking about it. You know, stars, you don't want them to be perfectly even. You know, stars are never perfectly even. There's usually clusters of it. There's darker spots where there's not that many stars. Some are brighter than the other ones. To create that brightness effect with the painting, just make it a little bit bigger, a tiny bit bigger. Um, you can even do, uh, It's you can't really do it too much with the pen, but if you're using paint, you can make some a little bit more washed out than others so it looks a little bit more like depth but these are small enough where you don't really have to worry about that um and i know that my breathing is i keep taking a deep breath because uh we're dealing with fires here in arizona and the air is just really messing and giving me kind of the asthmatic and I'm, i i wasn't asthmatic until recently and fortunately it's pretty minor minor but I still need an inhaler and when the air quality gets bad, I still struggle with it quite a bit. So that's just one of those days. Um, and now you can see what I'm talking about where you have a little bit of those white spots in the night sky. It just creates this cool galaxy type night. And I actually had, I did a couple of these because I also did this for uh, Sonora Living, which is a local television station. So this was a piece I was doing for that one. So I had to do quite a few of these because we had a couple of takes and then I was doing some um, show pieces for them and then we had a classes with these. So I think this is probably the seventh time I've painted this exact painting and every time my night skies come out a lot different. But I like it uh, with the little white gaps in there. I just had to take a sip of my drink because I felt like I was about to go get froggy voice again. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add a moon here in a minute. And then I'm going to add, I, I signed my name and then after I signed my name, I decided to throw in some shooting stars. So you'll see that here in a second. And I know it's been a really long time since I've done a video. Um, it's been crazy here. There's a lot of changes happening with my life. All really, really good. All things we're excited about. We are actually moving to new England uh, super excited. Our house is on the market. As soon as it sells, we are out of here. Uh, it's 111 degrees today. So you can imagine I'm very, very anxious to get out of Arizona ASAP. Um, so we're moving to New England. I'm so excited because cost of living there is, is like a third of what it is here. Um, Arizona has just gotten super expensive for us and just stressful and um, I'm not much of a desert girl. I think it's stunning here. It's beautiful in Arizona. Our landscape is so unique and amazing, but I'm just not a desert girl. I need to be near the water. I grew up near the water. Um, so it's a big change for us, but something we've wanted to do for a very, very long time. 
and, uh, you know, we can, we can buy a house on acreage. I can finally get my garden. We're talking about getting chickens, not too many, just a few. And, you know, just kind of quieting down. The great news besides that is that I am going to be doing my art and my writing full time. If you don't know that I'm a, I am a real estate agent here in Arizona that takes up a considerable amount of my time. And uh, because the cost of living is so much less, I'll be able to do my art and writing full time. So I'm super excited, which means once we're settled in, you'll get more of these videos. Um, and then, you know, maybe I'll get one of these real camping trips too, that are summertime camping under the stars. Maybe not in a tent. I'm not a tent person, but maybe, <laughs> maybe a motorhome. Um, but anyways, let me know uh, what you guys think. Um, are you the type to camp in a tent? I've done it before. I was a lot younger. I was in my early 20s. I feel like it was a lot more forgiving to sleep in a sleeping bag back then on my back. But um, I really liked it. I wouldn't do it again now, but I loved it. So let me know if you're the type to camp in a tent, motorhome or not at all. And then, of course, let me know how this painting went for you, but don't forget to subscribe and like if you like this. I'll see you on the next video.